What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. This is a super in-depth tutorial on using Novation components for the circuit tracks. I'm going to walk you through how to load packs, batches of sounds and individual sounds onto your Novation circuit tracks and also give you an overview of the rest of components, including briefly touching on MIDI CCs and the patch designer. I'm also going to show you how to extract patches from packs made for the original circuit if the individual patches aren't immediately available. It's a little bit annoying to do, but it is fully possible. So without any further introduction, let's jump into components. All right, I've got my circuit tracks connected to my computer via USB and I've got components novationmusic.com loaded up. Going to go to circuit tracks and I've already gone ahead and logged in. You can see the indicator that my circuit is properly connected and I'm logged in to uh, my Novation account so I can access all of my saved packs and such and start sending stuff to the circuit. So the first thing I want to do is load an entire pack to the circuit all at once. So to do that, I'm gonna hit upload pack. And in this case, I've got the pack DeLorean Dream available in Isotonic pulled up, not a sponsor, but a pack I like quite a bit and it's been adapted for tracks. The format you're looking for is a circuit tracks pack that has projects, samples, and patches all contained within it. Hit open, that'll all populate. And just so you can see the samples and all the patches loaded on here. If I want to go ahead and switch just individual samples or patches out, I can absolutely do that. For instance, let's say I wanna swap out a sample. And I should note for those of you newer to the circuit, for patches, the only format that will work is .syx. That is the circuit patch format. And that will work with both the original circuit and the circuit tracks. If I wanna replace a patch, all I have to do is just grab one, drag it in, easy as that. I can also, of course, load in custom samples. In this case, I'm going to pull from my $5 one shot sample pack. Uh, shameless self promotion there, link in the description. Let's just pull up a kick. And in this case, these are WAV files. You can just drag one in. And this will accept a variety of audio files, but you can't load audio files into patches. Uh, only circuit patches built with the circuit synth engine will work in patches. But samples will be where you put all your audio files. And a couple things to note here. For one thing, it will collapse it down to mono in terms of like the stereo spectrum. Uh, you've got mono samples only, so keep that in mind. And then also, this gives you a meter of your sample storage. This is cumulative across the entire pack. So as you load more and more samples into here, this sample storage bar will go up and up. And if you max it out and haven't filled up all the slots yet, you will have to probably shorten some of your samples or actually choose shorter samples to begin with. And once again, it's as easy as just dragging them in there and you can also click on a sample to audition it. Let's say that instead of loading on just one pack, you want to load in a bunch of sounds from multiple packs and kind of do a bit of a mix and match. For instance, let's say you want to load all of the kicks and snares from my $5 sample pack. That is super easy to do. Just select all the samples that you want within your folder, drag it in, and you'll see it automatically uh, guesses where you want to put them just in order and automatically lays them all out across the pads. Let's do the same um, with snares just for kicks. This is how I like to lay this stuff out, by the way, like two rows of kicks, two rows of snares, uh, two rows of like hi-hats and cymbals, and then two rows of effects is typically how I like to go for it. Although Novation seems to be pushing a bit of a different way of doing it, this is still what I prefer for navigation later on. So I've got all my snares here. Once again, just drag them all in, in a batch, process them all at once, auto-populated, super easy. And I really wish I had known about this when I first started loading sounds into the circuit, when I would start dragging stuff in one by one, you don't have to do that. You can do it all at once. For instance, let's say I want to just load an absolute ton of uh, patches from this pack. Once again, boom, easy as that. And of course, if I want to get even more particular about it, I can drag in individual patches to replace some of these. Uh, even like move this stuff around. It's all super straightforward. So let's say we are completely happy with how this is all laid out. Let's go to pack settings real quick, choose a color for it. I can even name it if I want. So I could call it like DeLorean Dream 2, back to editor. And now I can hit send to circuit tracks and send the entire pack. And at this point, it will give you the slot where you can place the pack. Uh, you will need an SD card if you want to have more than one pack on your circuit at a time. You can't just drag stuff directly onto the SD card. It's just there to expand the built-in storage. And since I have my SD card in here formatted to the format that Novation says to use, I'll put that up on the screen right now, I can go ahead and just select an empty slot, hit send pack, and it will 
take its sweet time to send the pack to the circuit. And from there, you should be able to just disconnect the circuit from your computer or load on more packs and go about your merry way. While that's sending the pack to the circuit, let's open a new components window. I will get back to this other stuff in the tracks editor but I want to quickly touch on adapting a pack meant for the original circuit to the new circuit. So let me click on the original circuit here and go ahead to browser. That's where I can hit upload pack. And in this case, the format you're looking for is dot circuit pack. Let's choose that. Very similar to the new circuit. And let's go to patches because let's just say that these patches aren't available as individual .syx files, but you really want to bring these onto your circuit tracks. Easy enough to do, just takes a bit of time and patience. Select a patch, hit the little download button, and then I'll download the patch. Just do this for each individual one. Uh, as far as I can tell, please correct me in the comments if I am wrong, but as far as I can tell, there's no way to do this faster because if you go to save, and try to download a batch of patches, it'll group all of these into one file. And that is something that the circuit tracks, unfortunately, does not know how to read. To make a long story short, you'll need to download each individual patch, and then you'll be able to drag those as a batch onto your circuit tracks all at once. It's still taking its time here. Moving back to circuit tracks, let's talk about MIDI templates next. MIDI templates are how the circuit tracks maps its knobs to control other synthesizers. So for instance, they've got uh, templates here for the Arturia Microfreak, the Korg Volca FM and Minilog XD, uh, the Innovation Mini Nova and Base Station 2 and Peak and such. So you can load these onto the circuits. If you hit send to circuit tracks, you can select a MIDI template and that's good to go just as is super easy. Let's do this as well. I have the original uh, mini log, but hopefully this will be close enough. Um, you can also create your own for synthesizers not listed here, and you can upload MIDI templates that others have made. Let's jump quickly into creating a MIDI template because this is something where there's not really a lot of information about it out there, but it's pretty straightforward. So these are the different macro knobs on the circuit. Select one, and you can select the CC number first of all. Now to do this effectively, you're gonna to wanna to look up MIDI implementation for your synth of choice. In this case, I've got the Volca Keys pulled up as an example. And uh, this looks intimidating, but basically if something's recognized, it'll have a little circle. And if it isn't, it'll have a little X. We are looking for all of these parameters here. For instance, cutoff is a good example of one to look for. So I'm gonna go over here. That correlates to control change 44. So let's just select macro five, for instance. We would set that to 44. I can change uh, how extreme that control is if I want to. And now this will be mapped to control the filter cutoff on my Volca keys. And I can do that for each individual knob once again, referring to this for which parameters I want to map to which macro knob. So for instance, I could choose something like LFO rate. That's 46. So I could do, say this, tell it to be 46. I can send that to the circuit tracks or I should probably name it before I do that and go from there. I should also mention that you should get into the habit of using the save button, both when you're developing packs and MIDI templates, and you can either save as or overwrite anytime you save a new, but I would highly recommend making sure you use that. Finally, let's jump into the patch editor. And there are a few ways that you can use this. First of all, if I just go into a pack, I can select a patch and it will pull up the synth editor. If you are familiar with uh, the layout of a lot of synth plugins, this will be pretty familiar to you. If not, I would recommend checking out some other videos on how to use like basic synthesis. I will link one at the end of this video. Essentially, you've got your different parameters for the basis of your sound, the mixer between these two oscillators, AKA your sound sources, the filter, the envelope and the LFO, and then all your mod stuff in here and your effects. I'm not gonna get super deep into that here, but there are a few very specific things that I do want to draw your attention to when it comes to the synth interface. First of all, I've gone back to the main window of synth here. Let me just make a new patch completely from scratch. I can cycle through my different oscillator types, or I can choose one from a list here. There's some wavetable stuff in here and some kind of classic uh, subtractive synthesis stuff. Um, you've got all of your different features here. That's pretty straightforward as far as uh, subtractive synth engines go. 
Uh, a couple very specific things though. First of all, in effects, uh, you can select your voice count. This is something that's useful when modifying stuff as well. You've got your equalizer in here, which is super nice to have, and you can mess with some effects as well. To map stuff to macros, go to modulation, and you can select a macro. Let's just say knob one, because why not? And this is what selecting a different macro looks like. And then you can have multiple destinations for one knob. So one knob can control multiple parameters at once. So let me select this. This is your entire list of parameters. I'll get into the mod matrix in a second because this can get pretty in depth if you want it to. Let's just do something like oscillator one volume. And you can even choose the start and end to kind of rein it in a little bit. And you can have a more visual control over that using these little diodes here. And uh, that's a nice visual representation of how that works. There's also depth. So that controls like which direction you turn the knob to get how extreme of an effect. There's a ton of control that this opens up to you. And this is something that's worth experimenting with. Uh, have your circuit plugged in and constantly hit notes and turn knobs to see how it's responding to the changes that you're making. And finally, here's the mod matrix. Essentially, you have your sources and you have your destinations. So direct means it just passes right through and doesn't do anything. Or you can select something like keyboard for key tracking, and then you can select what that goes to. For instance, you might send it to something like a filter frequency. And so maybe the lower on a keyboard you are, the more aggressively something is filtered down. And once again, you can choose the depth here. And there's a lot of mod slots. You can really go wild with this if you want to and create some pretty complicated sounds, which is really awesome. This is a very powerful editor that I want to get more into in the future, uh, time permitting. But this is just a super quick overview of how this all works. I should also note that there's drive built right into the filter and there's key tracking built into the filter. Um, and of course, there's the separate distortion. So if you want to get grit out of your circuit, you absolutely can. Finally, patch settings. This is where you would name it and select the category. This doesn't actually have any bearing on how the patch behaves. This is more just for your own categorization. And of course, you can send to circuit tracks or save and uh, download the patch directly. Once you've made a bunch, like just download them as you go, as you create new patches, download them individually and then load them all onto your circuit at once or even sell them. I should briefly mention firmware. Um, this is where any firmware updates will be given to you. And this should be fairly easy to just load a firmware update into your circuit. You can also use this to download the components standalone software if you don't like the idea of having to use Chrome. Um, I don't mind it personally, but some people prefer to have a dedicated piece of software that they can use. And if you have spotty internet or as this says, have issues installing firmware updates, uh, this is worth a look. There's also the user guide in here, just so you know. If you are completely new to the Novation circuit or are an intermediate user who just upgraded to the tracks, I recommend checking out my super in-depth tutorial. You can click or tap up over here. And if you'd like some recommendations and sound demos of some really solid packs for the circuit, you can click or tap down over here. Many of them haven't been updated to the tracks format yet, but I'm sure a bunch of them will be and some of them already have. Plus you can always just harvest the patches from them and use them on either circuit.